Hello and welcome to another episode of Three Los International, your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. We're back. It's Monday afternoon, Central European time, and some breaking news today in the world of football affecting Olympiacos. But not only, it appears as if Edu Gaspar, the well, former sporting director, should I say, of, of Arsenal Football Club, is going to be taking on a new role. It's been widely reported uh, from this morning in British media outlets that Edu Gaspar is parting ways from Arsenal and he seems set to join Olympiacos, Nottingham Forest and Rio Ave, the Evagelos Marinakis football empire. We've got a new face that's entering our lives today as Olympiacos fans and we have a full house here today. We're almost a full house. We're missing two, but at least we have a full house in terms of filling up the screen. I'm joined <laughs> by Aris Bulubasis from the United States, Marshal de Beauf from France and Costas Lianos, resident in Greece. And I'm Costa, uh, your humble host from Brussels, Belgium. Guys, <laughs> Wow. Wow. Where do you start? Wow, wow indeed. Wow, Costa, indeed. May, maybe maybe let's start with you because you actually wrote a piece for the Sun today about this and you've been following this uh since since it all started breaking this morning. So maybe let's get get your thoughts on you know what what we know and uh and then we let we can go from there. Well, I mean, Costa, it's funny that it's you and me who are starting this because I believe that you and me have absolutely no reason to be surprised by <laughs> the way things have gone. Uh, perhaps we know more than we should be saying right now. Uh, there's no surprise in this. This has been going on since the summer. You and I, Costa, have a very good reason to not be surprised since, well, I'm not going to say more, uh, before the summer. Uh, yeah, well, it, 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 to correct you just slightly, it seems like it is definitely happening. Uh, anyone I'm talking to right now, they are confirming it. Nothing is signed yet. Signed yet. Uh, Edu Gaspar uh, is joining uh, Vangelis Marinakis' empire that currently consists of Rio Ave, Olibiakos, and Nottingham Forest, and probably Monza uh, coming soon. Uh, what we have heard right now is that uh, Edu had been in Brazil for personal reasons, came back to London today, and it's official that he's not going to be working with Arsenal. We've been discussing this before going on air. Arsenal players are not happy about this. Uh, uh, fans are not happy about this. Uh, this is a man that revolutionized the club. He took them from Banter FC. I know you love that name, Costa, and turned them into Premier League title contenders and hell, Champions League title contenders uh, with some very ballsy moves, getting rid of very, very big names and contracts such as Pierre Emerico Bameyang and Mesut Ozil, and bringing in stars like Declan Rice, Martin Edegard, William Saliba, Kai Havertz. Uh, very popular figure, very competent uh, uh, director. Uh, we are hearing that he wanted to become CEO of Arsenal, which didn't seem like very feasible. And that's something Marinakis is willing to do uh, in his group, given that role. Uh, we are hearing that he's going to triple his salary, the salary that he had at Arsenal. Marinakis is going to triple his salary. That's what we're hearing right now. Nothing concrete uh, on the matter. Uh, this is a very, um, in my opinion, this is a very good day for Olympiacos Rio Ave and Nottingham Forest. Obviously, we don't know the details of his role yet. We are hearing that maybe Marinex is going to make him a CEO of the club. Uh, but it is a very, very promising situation for all three clubs involved. Who's next? I mean, uh, I I'll maybe take it <laughs> one, one step further, Costa. We... You and I had the chance to briefly meet Edu over the summer. I won't say where, but uh, what amazed me about him was how charming of an individual he was and how like how super friendly he was. And that's also something that I've been reading a lot in the press coverage today about the impact this is having on Arsenal players. It's from simple things like just the way he talks to people, you know, picking up the phone and saying hello, my friend, to absolutely everyone that he talks to. Um, and yeah, it's certainly, I would say, the kind of guy that perhaps is missing from uh, from Olympiacos is backroom staff or people behind the scenes. We don't know how you know how big of a role day to day he's going to have in Olympiacos. They're talking about him taking over a CEO role over 
um, like overlooking all three clubs. Um, there's also been quite a lot of talk about him being a little bit out of favour at Arsenal in recent times. Uh, Ari, I think you you can dive into this a little bit more in terms of what's happening at Arsenal, being a banter FC. I mean, Arsenal fan <laughs> as well yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, the, there's a lot of discussion about uh, influence, right? So in the same way that Lina Suluku, before she left Roma, gained influence and, and power and control within Roma, there's been similar discussion uh, that's been written today in, in, in articles by the Daily Mail that's been discussed on various uh, media outlets uh, that cover Arsenal about one of the lawyers of the Kronkes getting the similar types of influence and kind of taking that away from, from Edu. Because influence and control when you're in a football organization, it's a zero-sum game. If somebody's getting more, then somebody's losing. So that's always the case. And if you're somebody who, which he built the this Arsenal team, I mean, from, from the shambles that it was before, I can say that as an Arsenal fan, he got rid of huge contracts. He took big risks, a, a risks keeping Arteta, because remember, Arteta didn't start off so great. So he took a lot of big risks. He brought Arsenal with the fines and the players that he brought in and made it what it is today. So for him to lose influence I would understand why he wouldn't take that lightly and why he would want to seek an opportunity where he could do the same and have even more control and the ability to build something bigger. That would be an allure to anybody in that position. So it's it, all the pieces kind of are like falling in place at the right time. Marshall, what do you think this means for Brody Biagos? If we can dive into the like really meaty stuff, like what does this mean for well, Brody Biagos? The first thing I would say is that we don't know exactly the role yet. Like the, the, it, it's kind of the role Cordon has before, but we don't know exactly what it means. Like uh, we we assume that Nottingham is at the, the the top of the pyramid, but we don't know exactly how he operates between the three clubs. But a part of that, it's a massive news because probably on the market right now, Hedu has to be the bigger or best name, maybe af after the. Uh, I don't recall the name. I don't know how to pronounce the name of the the city guy, you know, the guy that is about to leave. It is fine. Yeah, that guy. But the, the, the job he has done with Arsenal is tremendous, not only by bringing players, but also by offloading a lot of high contracts. And that's a very difficult job. And Olympiakos knows that perfectly, I would say. So I'm curious to see what he can do. I'm not ex expecting him to work for Olympiakos on a daily basis, but that doesn't doesn't matter that much to me because if nothing gets better, the whole thing gets better. And it means Olympiacos gets better because if we remember Cordon uh, did good transfers while working on the three clubs. So uh, if someone is uh, has skills to be a good sports director, it will benefit the whole structure because actually I would say Olympiacos has no sports director. Well, we do have one, but not, not a competent one. I would say. Well, and more on that, we know that there's a symbiotic relationship between between the network, right? The clubs within the network. You know, even if let's say he's just the CEO of Nottingham Forest, his decisions there will have impact on Libyakos. Look at the two players we just brought to the academy, Yusuf Tay, Yusuf uh, Abdullah Tif Tay and Lamin Sila. They were for Forest. They were supposed to go to Forest, but they couldn't get the work permit, so they came to Libyakos. You know, David Carmo, the deal being done through Nottingham Forest to bring him to us. These things are going to have an impact on us regardless of whether he becomes a global CEO, global director or not. The The question for me when he comes on board is what happens to Sirianos, who right now is like the global technical director. My question will be what does his role become or does he just answer to a do? So that that is a question for me that is coming to my mind more than anything else. It's like the whole, like, what? Sh the, the structure of the whole organization from a global point of view is getting very interesting. Not only, so it's not only the Olympiagos perspective, you mentioned George Sirianos. My understanding is that he's kind of head of the global scouting network, as it were. It's interesting if you also take into consideration some of the recent reports about us hiring a new head scout. Uh, was it from, from Feyenoord? Akas, uh, the old Balk guy. He was a yeah. Balk chief scout too. 
so that that's all really interesting that this is all happening within the space of one week or 10 days we started reading reports about Agas from Feyenoord now Edu Gaspar's kind of falling into place and it, it, it isn't something that happened overnight um Marinakis has you know he's he's been <laughs> frothing at the mouth over Edu I feel like it's been it's been a very long time there have been reports about Edu uh, being at uh, Marinaki's birthday party in in Mykonos in in some uh, in, in some some of the outlets. So to to Costa's point right at the beginning, it, it's not a surprise, but but super interesting what impact this is going to have. You have Darko Kovacevic, who is currently listed on Olympiakos's website as sporting director, Christian Carambo as the strategic advisor and ambassador and now if you ask me it just looks like edu's really gonna have um let's say the the top role that he wanted at arsenal actually i mean it's no secret he wanted to be chief executive officer but that role was given to somebody else that was close to uh to the Kroenke family uh, and that's maybe you know one of the things that accelerates uh edu gaspar's departure from from Arsenal and you know he's finally falling into the hands of Vagelis Marinagis and uh, he's not being stingy about wages he's really keen to bring him in here now Costa you said something about reported trebling of his salary yeah, in tripling. your that's what, yeah? They yeah. Say. that's what they say tripling of the salary uh to be honest and sorry if I'm interrupting you Costa but uh when the whole thing started to kind of drop the whole news the whole news cycle took off uh i talked to my editor at the sun and he told me surely he's not leaving arsenal for you know not to come for us to Ave. so there's surely something in it for uh edu something really big in it for him. i don't know if it's money i don't know if it's the position that practically makes him top dog i see i i, I think i can see marcel chomping at the bit there i think he wants to say something but there's surely something in it for him isn't there no, no, I just, I was uh, scratching my hand. But the thing is, <laughs> uh, the, the thing that a lot of people do not understand, and I've read that on Twitter, is that modern football, when you, when you, are, when you are a good sport director, has a limited amount of time when you can be uh, powerful. Because uh, we saw that, I, I'm not a close... I don't follow closely Arsenal, but I can see what happened happened in the club, and probably was the same with Modesto, for example, at Olympiacos. At some point, when you're a sport director, you want to leave for elsewhere. Does not mean the club you're going to is better, but you will have more power, more influence, and I think that's the the what a sport director wants to do on a daily basis. But overall, uh, the Marinakis empire, if I could call it like that. It's different from the City Group, for example, because you have a powerful club in the Premier League, you have a giant club in a minor European league competing in Europa League, uh, Conference League, or even Champions League if we win the title, and you have Rio Ave in the league in which you can throw talents from uh, South America, talents from everywhere. And like, if that is not tempting for someone like Edu, then... What is tempting, man? It's I know it's probably we are PAs because we are Olympiacos fans, but the the perspective from someone like Edu is massive, a part of the salary, of course. A hundred percent right. It, like who would think about it? Like there's only one way to go, right? As human beings, we especially if you're ambitious, you just want more. He's already been in the role he's been in Arsenal, so the only thing that could allure him besides a CEO role somewhere is the fact that he can be literally running a whole network, three different clubs, controlling that, having that success be something that's attributed to him. And then don't forget the the potential of perhaps a fourth club in the network because for two summers we've been talking about Monza. There's been a link between Monza and, and Marinakis as well, or an Italian club. So imagine adding another club to that as well. You know, the the... The and I, the reason I bring that up is because this the Costa brought up that this Adu situation hasn't just happened overnight. In fact, last season there were rumors about this. What was it in March, March or April? There were rumors about Adu 
and 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 joining Marinakis and being there from them. So these lately, these bigger backroom, maybe big picture things that are coming together, there there there's been pieces all over the place. Same thing with Rio Ave. Now it's Monza in Italy. So don't be surprised if all of this starts to coalesce together. We we talked about. Remember when we did the interview with with Carapapas, the vice president of Olympiacos, for anyone that's listening that's not aware, he kind of talked about how everything is shared together and how the whole system, the, how the whole system is now a, a, a sharing of resources. If you're building this network to be a symbiotic environment where all these different pieces are sharing resources with each other, it makes sense that you bring in somebody that is extremely good at making all of these things click together and that built a super successful platform and model at one of the biggest clubs in the world. And he did it when they were in shambles too. That's a really good sign. A dude can work on a budget. Arsenal wasn't always able to spend boatloads of money out of nowhere. He had to make sales. He had to fix things. He had to get rid of big contracts, and he knows how to do that. Now, of course, the scale with other clubs is going to be smaller, but the guy has done this. So there's no there's no better piece to be able to link all the things together that were talked about by by Vice President Garapapas. The whole thing just makes sense. If I would add I something. Consider... Sure. Sorry, Costa. Go ahead, go ahead. Costa. Uh, very, very quickly. Go ahead. Um, just in all of this, I can I can hear a lot of the questions and first comments coming out of the mouths of Olympiacos fans all around the world, to some of who are watching us now. Uh, you know, the, 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 the typical reaction is going to be, yeah, but he's going to spend all his time on Nottingham Forest. I think the key question for me is what level of autonomy Edu's going to have and what level of degree of power he has in decision-making and what personnel he surrounds himself with as well. Um, you, you mentioned Ari. I mean, he, he, had, he was a key decision maker at Arsenal when it came to sales. He had the balls to say, we're going to sell um, Aubameyang. He was a key player for Arsenal. He had the balls to let go of Lacazette, uh, Mesut Ozil, like big personalities. And making sales at Olympiagos has been... It's been, it's been a sore subject. If you look at some of the players that have come through the club and we had high hopes from Madi Kamara to Papa Be, Abu Sise and, you know, the amount of potential revenue that we've we've just completely missed out on because of, let's just call it poor decision-making or not knowing when to sell. So it looks like this guy, from his experience, he knows when to pull the trigger and he's not afraid to make those decisions. It, again, for me, it goes back to all right. What is his level of autonomy, and his 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 say in in the decision making day to day? And I would think this man being, I think, a careful individual, that he would have some assurances on this point. That that for me is a key key topic of of discussion in all of this. I think also I would the fact definitely that... want a few things in, in, in writing. Sorry, Martial, but before no, I on. sorry, just just uh, I, I would definitely write one a few things in writing if I were to do definitely absolutely because this is not going to be an easy job. Martial, please. No, I was going to say that it might hurt Olympiacos fans sometimes that we do not seem to be the priority in that uh, empire. But the thing is. The fact that we are linked to the to a guy like Edu, even indirectly, is something very interesting to me because you mentioned that Ari earlier, that the, the the under nineteen player we got through Nottingham, and imagine like you Edu, everyone knows you in football, and I think Costa uh, in the UK it has been said that he's loved by every uh, every club. Uh, the, the thing is that everyone knows Edu and. He can have players like, okay, this guy is not ready for nothing. I'm not even ready for Olympiacos. Then he's going to go to Rio Ave. If he's good at Rio Ave like Costinha, he can go to Olympiacos. And if Costinha turns out to be a massive right back for Olympiacos, he can go to Nottingham. And it, it's not a matter of do we like that or not. It's the reality of football. And uh, Costa with a C mentioned that earlier. 
we paid a big price by not selling assets. And it just imagine if Madi, if Papa Busise, if Semedo, if he had a criminal record, would have gone to England earlier, like for 10 million mm -hmm. each, it would have changed so many things. And maybe Hedu can change that. I'm not expecting him to do wonders because as Costa with the case said, it's not going to be an easy job, but it's very exciting to me. And one other small piece Absolutely. of information that we haven't touched yet is who kind of also comes along with this. And it's a person that we've recently just done business with to bring in uh, Willian. And that is the the agent, uh, Kia, I don't know how to say his last name, Jorachian, I believe. Jurachian. So that's another piece that we haven't talked about yet, but this is also really important. And because, you know, the he is the one that took Adu to Arsenal. And that he brokered that deal between between Adu and Arsenal, so you know that the Willian deal here, the the conversations have probably been going on, and and now linking us, adding Kia to that umbrella of of agents, because we know that this club and Marinakis has been now extending the net, as it were, to um, you know with with CAA base uh, George Mendez, obviously uh, we've talked about before. Now you're adding Kia to this, a huge piece to think about that comes with Adu. So all of this is really important when we're talking about what's the potential of this of this addition to the Marinakis group family. So very important stuff, and it really it really means so many more opportunities, even even if Lubiakos isn't the star of the show in the network. The opportunities that are going to be available from this, and somebody with this type of pedigree is. It, you know, I think it's a rising tide lifts all ships. And I think that's exactly what this will be. I'm glad you actually raised that about Kia um, because we've seen not only at Olympiacos what can happen when you get too close or too dependent on agents. Uh, there's a lot that can be said about Pedence and uh, George Mendes over the summer. You know, um, I think a lot of people in Greece in particular kind of thought that Pedence deal would happen including us to a degree, that it would happen one way or another and George Mendes would be part of it, but we, we all saw what happens. And, you know, when it comes to, to Kia, there's, any, and with any agent and with any person, there's good and bad. Like, he he's had some success bringing, bringing Adu to, to Arsenal. On the other hand, you look at some of the other clubs in, in the Premier League and in, in English football in general, where Kia's been, been involved, whether it's Everton or Reading, and Things haven't gone too well for Everton and Reading over the past couple of years. I think it's fair to say. So I, you know, we need to be a bit bit careful about that. So devil's in the detail. We still don't know the exact role, as we said, pending confirmation and an announcement sooner or later. The other thing I wanted to say as a closing point is that if you look at our squad, there are so many players in there that are just so interesting from a investment or like business the business of football point of view the 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 stars that are coming out of the academy uh Costinho was mentioned santiago has a there are players in the squad where you you're, you're you're edu and you're looking at the squad and you're like okay what can i do here and what kind of business can i make what kind of revenues can i generate what markets can i can i have an impact in it's super interesting um so i think I like to think that um, he's not just going to come in and be, let's say, more focused on on Forest and you know Libakos being like that 20, 30 uh, percent part of part of the project. So let's. I, I am somewhat optimistic in terms of the potential and Edu looking at this with with um, a holistic and open attitude in terms of you know not just being a key figure for Forest but being a key figure for everything and taking on a role that in the end it demands more than his previous job and is it's a step up it's not a downgrade you know Costa your editor saying oh I don't believe he's going to go and join Forest and Olympiacos from Arsenal this is a step up for me from from Arsenal it's more responsibility for him it's a new challenge and it goes it takes his career in, a, in an upwards trajectory for me. Look, as an Arsenal fan, Olympiacos and, and Nottingham Forest have more European pedigree than Arsenal. How many titles does Arsenal have in Europe? Just saying. 
You said it. Now, let, let it be known that the Arsenal fan said it, not the Tottenham fan in the UK. So, But uh, for my closing argument, obviously, uh, football is the kind of game where, you know, we... We still only if, 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 during the FFP uh, period. We still only care about men in boots and not men in suits. But if we did care about men in suits, this is a bomb for Olympiacos. This is the kind of thing that would fill up the airport if we cared about the men in suits. I mean, Edu Gaspar. I, I hate I hate going overboard, but surely, surely, if you look at his work that he's done since 2019, in a way, when you think sporting directors, is it? Of, is it far-fetched to call him a top 10 of his kind? When it comes to sporting directors, is it is it far-fetched to call him a top 10? Surely it's not. Surely that's not an exaggeration. I mean, he lost the, the, the title in the Premier League twice over a, over a few minor details. This is huge for Olympiacos. This is a bomb. This is very exciting. But as we said, guys, we need to see the kind of structure. We need to see... The kind of role, and we see, and we need to see the kind of mentality that's going to come with him. So, over to you, Mister uh, Mister Edu. Good luck. You haven't. He hasn't signed anything yet. Until then, once he does that, then good luck. And uh, let's see. Well, it's definitely going to be very interesting to see how this goes. We're super excited for this. At kind of the news dropping this morning, uh, at the time of recording. So, can't wait to see what you do, Mister Edu. Hopefully. Uh, you bring the whole network, Olympiacos, Forest, Rio Ave, and whatever clubs come in the future to incredible uh, amounts of glory that we haven't seen. So we'll see what happens. Guys, before we go ahead and close up, like and subscribe. Take two quick seconds. If you like the stuff that you hear, we bring you all of the news from the red and white in English, of course. We're here to connect the red and white family. The red and white family gets bigger and bigger to the point where we are finalists in the Football Content Awards. We'll see you guys in London next month, or sorry, this month. I almost forgot it's November. And we're really excited for that. So help us continue to grow the community and give a bigger voice to the red and white. So take that quick second. It means a lot to us, and every engagement boosts us in the algorithm to find more and more red and white fans. This is Theodore International, by the fans, for the fans, and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah.